So let me just make sure we're up and working here and then we'll get it going, hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna start you off, as Tim said, uh, he spent a lot of time talking about uh, the workload infrastructure balancing parts of virtual wisdom. So what I'm going to take you through is not only uh, like the dashboards and some of the, the cool features around visualizations, but we'll also walk through the problem, prob problem resolution aspects and capacity forecasting aspects of the platform. So when we're starting out here, we're in a dashboard that's really situated for a VP of infrastructure. It's, and so at the top, what you're seeing right away um, is our, our application-centric nature of visualizing health status for you. So the VP can see uh, at a glance how their applications are performing and the relative business tier of all of those applications. So we've called it platinum, gold, silver, bronze. It could be tier zero, one, two, three. And this has gone out and been discovered from something like a ServiceNow CMDB, bringing in the business tiers, automatically taking those applications and then discovering all of the associated infrastructure. So as I showed in the setup, just to make sure that the Wi-Fi was working, we have the ability uh, to drill into these, which we'll do here in a second. But for now, I want to walk you through just the, a little bit more of the dashboard itself so you get a, a semblance of the way that we can bring in and visualize data across compute, network storage, cloud, et cetera. So not only are we showing data from an application perspective in my green, yellow, red, but we're showing who are my top users across compute network and storage from an application perspective. So we've chosen three metrics, we collect many more, but it's just a way for you to visualize and see how am I doing from CPU ready? How am I doing from network throughput? How am I doing from a storage response time perspective? And keep in mind, this can come from many different sources. So in this case, we're, we're grabbing data from VMware, we're grabbing data from NetFlow, we're also grabbing data from Cisco SAN Analytics. So it's taking all of that data and putting it front and center for you guys in the same dashboard. On down the line, we're gonna just do a breakdown for the VP of infrastructure across compute network and storage. So we're not really looking at an application view anymore, but we're looking at the associated infrastructure for those apps and how they're performing from a green, yellow, and red perspective, as well as the top talkers across the environment. And what you'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen is some of the things that Tim talked about earlier in the presentation, and that's the recommendations. So the ability to bring some of those optimization recommendations from um, the virtualization environment and moving virtual machines around and putting them front and, front and center in the dashboard so you don't have to go somewhere else in the platform to figure out if there's things that you can do to improve your environment. That makes sense. Okay. I do have a question. So, sure. do, you, do you have to install agents on everything to do your monitoring, or how does that work? Everything that we do today is agentless, and, and typically either API driven or data gets pushed to us. In the case of NetFlow or SAN Analytics or something like that, mm -hmm. but it's all typically um, like in the case of vCenter, you would just give we would just be given the vCenter credentials. It goes out and just starts pulling the metrics in. So. We try to be as completely agentless, and we've done so today up to this point. So, so it's easy to slip into the environment and not jump through a bunch yeah. of hoops. Any other questions? Okay. And then just on down the line, we're just seeing another breakdown of network and then the breakdown of storage. So the ability to visualize things in different ways, the ability to show specific topologies of different pieces of infrastructure on the dashboard, and we'll drill into one of those in a second. But in, in the spirit of, of looking at one of these red, red items in terms of applications, let's go through sort of a problem resolution workflow and drill into the process we would go through to seeing an issue on a dashboard and going through the triage process and how we would close that loop. So what, what we can do is we can first get a semblance of what the open case is for this particular application. So in this case, it's just average performance. So what we might want to do is get a little bit more context around what the application actually looks like. And to do that, we can drill into the topology. And I already have that pulled up, so I'm just going to pivot to that. And this is really one of the marquee features of virtual wisdom. So what we're showing you here from the left-hand side to the right is the, the business tier of the application. Keep in mind that's discovered either from something like ServiceNow or you can input it manually. We're showing you the application and then when we've gone out and discovered this, we just are basically given the high-level VMs usually. 
And then what we're, we're going to go do is go out and discover all the other associated components of the app. The hosts, the IP addresses, all of the downstream infrastructure, all the way down through, in this case, we're talking about NAS. So all the way down to the front end IP addresses, down to the NetApp filer itself. And that's all automatically discovered based on what we know about um, the application when we discover the virtual machines. We walk down that north-south axis, as Tim said, into and then build this map out of what the application looks like. Now, if there are things that I don't have licensed, how will that be represented here? So they, they won't be there. So that's an interesting way that we address, that we address um, potential issues like that in the product. Discovery of elements is not licensed. So if you want to go in and simply turn on discovery for something like vSAN, you don't have to buy a license to do that. You just have to buy a license to collect the metrics. So you could visualize your environment you know, without or other portions of the environment without buying a license, but if you want to start getting the data and getting the value of you know, red, yellow, green, alarms, and things like that, you would just purchase the license to get the data. Okay. So the license for collecting the metrics, that's like the default license, right? Could you actually not buy that license? So you, you can um, buy the uh, license for specific things. So for example, if you um, chose not to, to license the hypervisor but just wanted to license visibility in the operating system, you could do that. Mm -hmm. So you, you can, you're not, um, we don't force you to, to buy all the bits in between. The difference is you'll see them up here. Uh, if we're seeing response time issues, um, then it, you know, we may not be able to tell you what the status of that device is if we don't have visibility of it. But if we're looking at the wire, we probably will regardless. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So digging into where we were before, we have the same ability to drill into either the application or the subcomponents that are read to try to triage the issue. So the same sort of click-driven, context-aware gives you the same breakdown of what the issue is, average performance in this case. And then if we click on that, we can essentially drill into what uh, we call a case page. And what that really means is we've already taken all of the events that we've seen, in this case NAS performance alarms, and deduplicated those or uh, collapsed them into a single case so you guys aren't getting spammed with um, many, many emails or many, many events coming across. And when we open an incident ticket in ServiceNow, for example, we open it based on the case. Correct. So we don't, it's not triggered for every alarm, it's triggered for the aggregate. And one of the things that we do, and so we were looking at the application called Order Manager, right? That's the one that was having an issue. But based on the component that opened the case, we can also see that there are another six applications that are potentially experiencing the issue because of the performance issue that we're looking at. So when we open cases on pieces of infrastructure, we don't just tie it back to that infrastructure itself because that's not usually as important as being able to tell the business what apps are impacted and oh, here's the business tier of those apps as well. And then in here we can also visualize what we're seeing in terms of response times and things like that. But the real value of coming in here is our investigations and our workflows around triaging the problem. So that's on the right hand side. And this, as Tim alluded to earlier, is really coming from our 10 plus years of experience in the field in solving issues. So in this particular scenario, we're looking at an application that's running on VMware and it's connected to NAS. And so one of the common problems in a NAS environment is a NAS metadata storm, which is typically when you see um, a client or multiple clients doing a lot of directory scan operations or any operation that's not a read or a write, essentially. And so we go in here and give you background on that, and then we take the next step, which is to say, using one of our other analytics, which is Trend Matcher, which does event correlation across all of the data that you collect from us, and go out and look for uh, the potential bad actors that are causing this metadata storm. So the order manager application has bad performance because somebody else is a noisy neighbor essentially on the NAS doing things that it shouldn't be doing. And we, we actually see this sort of thing quite often mm. where replication is set up in a default configuration and no one understands why things slow down at certain periods of the day. And, uh, so our ability to span out and sort of see the fan out effect of all the workloads and how they in interact with one another is really one of the strengths of the platform. 
and okay. the, I, I have a hypothetical on that then. So if we were looking at like VMware on AWS and uh, we're using this, I'm guessing this would work on VMware and AWS since it's basically it mm -hmm. VMware, right? Yeah. Uh, but we were using like uh, RDS on, on the back end and, you know, using that. So what kind of visibility do you get? Do you actually get the AWS pieces as well? <coughs> Since you so say you are multi-cloud with so AWS, the, or? We will see, the, there's a couple things that we'll see there. Um, firstly, you know, we're a, a NetFlow consumer, so we'll be able to see that from the, the VDS switches that are deployed within the, the environment. Um, secondly, from an operating system, we can actually see the connections to RDS. And part of, with the metrically acquisition, we actually have RDS-specific monitoring as well. So we'll be integrating those two pieces so that you've got a full story in terms of that. What we do with Virtual Wisdom in the public cloud today is we monitor all the, the VM instances and the operating systems running on them. So the investigation has gone, gone out and done the work for us of figuring out who has caused the problem. And, the, and it's told us this right in the case so we have a breakdown of who the top bad actor is. In this case, it's another application. It's called supply chain. Here's the reason for the, the um, here, here's the reason for the metadata storm, et cetera. But the other thing that we do is we believe in showing our work. So if you want to, you can pivot and go to the output of the trend matcher analytic itself and see what it ran. And this is very, very cool because on the right-hand side, it's giving you a breakdown of who your bad actors are three different applications, essentially three different noisy neighbors. But not only that, it's showing you how they relate to the order manager application in the environment. And it's calling out that these are in fact noisy neighbors. They're, well, in most cases, a lesser tiered application, but they're sharing the same resource in the NetApp front end port. And you're able to visualize and see not only, yeah, these are the people that cause the issue or the applications, but here's what it actually looks like in terms of my infrastructure and it mapped all the way back to tiers and all the way back down to storage. So, and then that gets, um, as Tim said, pushed into ServiceNow, and so that folks can see that and triage and jump into the platform if they need to, um, to uh, dig in deeper. So I'm missing something here. Why the NetApp uh, filer is not read? I mean, oh, it, it is uh, the, the source of the issue at the end. The, the oh. storage port is. I can drill in and you can see that. So we're monitored, our alarm went off at the front end port level, and then you see a halo when you collapse. It's a little bit hard to see on the screen. Okay, okay. I see. So one of the things that we're avoiding doing is the sea of red. Yeah. yeah. So you have one thing and it cascades all the way up and everyone gets concerned when it's not really a concern. So we'll show that there is a child alarm mm -hmm. without turning the whole thing red. So do you want to just maybe show the, the patterns and show how the, the correlation was actually? Uh, oh, yes. Let me expand that out so you can see that here as well. So we take the base trend of the response time change, and then we find the correlations in the environment. And this, the way Trend Matcher works is you can either say, look for anything that's logically connected and find trends that are similar, or you can use different scenarios that we've built. In this case, Metadata Storm is one of the actual scenarios. But there's other ones in terms of virtual machine contention, other things we've built for other integrations that we have in the environment as well. So it'll, the Trend Matcher is that correlation engine. So it'll go and do statistical correlation. But where uh, it also applies heuristics, which is what Andrew was describing. Mm. So for known problems, it's out there looking for those specific issues mm. to see if that is a potential root cause as well. So it's not just telling you this is where the problem is coming from. It's then applying the heuristics to say, well, this is why the problem is occurring. And uh, it's capable of doing both positive and negative correlation. So positive when something is, you know, in this case, out of normal operating bounds, but negative is the classic 3AM problem. What, what happened? And 3AM when everything stops. So it's continually looking for both those scenarios. And I think in the interest of time, that's probably where we should wrap the demo um, and take any final questions. All right, so you're, you're able to see these storms, you're able to log these storms, you're able to notify on these storms. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Are you able to triple, uh, trigger any actions around them? Are you able to say, oh, well, this is the noisy neighbor on my Isilon, so let's kill his access for a minute till this application can catch up because it's at a higher level, it's a platinum, and this guy's a gold? So today, that's, uh, that's the next piece in the puzzle. So right now, we're, do, we're taking the, the crawl, walk, run, run approach of we found the issue, we're opening the incident, we're letting a human see it, and then we're working that path to address it. But in the future, our path is going to be once we earn that trust, and once a, a customer has seen this over and over again, then we're going to close the loop and tie in with orchestration to make those changes. There's a, there's a learning engine behind this. Yeah. So it's looking at you know, what ah, were the effective paths. The AI ML pieces <laughs> are all missing. All right. So, because I mean, automation at the end of the day, you know, you can make things worse if you if you're making uh, decisions on poor data. Yeah, you give yourself the emotion sickness. Precisely. Right. <laughs> a great wrap up.